Hello, my name is Lisa Villanueva, and I'm from the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, the Northside Chicago branch. Today, we're going to be having a discussion on the topic, Soul Salvation. I have with me two special guests. We have the Dean of the IDMR Lansing branch, Dr. Terry Welsh, and I also have with me Dr. Kenyatta Jackson, who's also a member of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research, Northside Chicago branch. Dr. Welsh, Dr. Kenyatta Jackson, Hello. Hello. thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. Today I'd like to start our discussion by opening with a scripture. I'll be reading Mark 16, 15 through 16, and this should serve as the basis for our dialogue going hmm. forward. Mark 16, 15 through 16, and I might want to add that we will be using the true and correct names of our Heavenly Father, the, uh, which is Yahweh, His Son's divine title, which is Elohim, and the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, instead of the incorrect titles of Lord and God or the erroneous name of Jesus Christ. Mark 16, 15 through 16. And he said unto them, Go ye unto all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So, Dr. Jackson, would you mind get, getting us started with some questions? Sure. My first question is, what does the Bible say about salvation? And if I'm not baptized, does that mean that I will not be saved? Great question. Dr. Welsh, you want to take that for sure. us? What does the Bible say about salvation? Mm -hmm. And what was that second if part? If I'm not baptized, does that mean I will not be saved? And if I'm not baptized, does that mean I will not be yeah. saved? Okay, excellent question. Because right related to Mark 16, 15 through 16, Yahshua said, that was a quote from Yahshua to his apostles. And he said that he was sending them forth into all the world to preach the gospel to every creature. And then he said, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Okay. But he that doesn't believe mm -hmm. shall be damned. Okay? okay? All right. Now, notice, by the way, he didn't say he that doesn't believe and isn't baptized right. Right. shall be damned. I just want to mention that right now. Okay. However, th let me get another couple of scriptures that might be related to this just to show you that what I'm going to talk about is in the Bible. Okay. Get Ephesians, if you would. Um, what is it, uh, chapter four, six through eight, something like that? Ephesians four, six through eight. Yeah. Let's see, Do by, you want, there's one body? No, it's by grace ye are saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of Yahweh, not of works lest any man should boast. Okay, is that two, eight, nine? Yeah, it may be, yes. Ephesians two. The exact location of these scriptures right. don't always. All right, here it, it is. It recorded here. All right, no problem. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Yes. For by grace are ye saved, through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of Yahweh, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, now it's a very important point that he makes there. Okay. okay. He said, you are saved by grace, through faith, mm -hmm. and that's not of yourself. Right. It's the gift of Yahweh, not of works, Okay. lest any man should boast, okay? okay? So the reason I emphasize that and then connect that with Matthew 16, 15 through 16 is because in both cases, he is not talking about something where a person has to perform physical activities or works for the necessity of salvation, right. okay? Mm -hmm. okay? In other words, the requirement is to believe, believe. Okay. okay? And the truth of the matter is, it's the work of the Holy Spirit that causes us to believe. Mm -hmm. That is why Yahshua sent the apostles out to preach the gospel, mm -hmm. okay? It says that faith comes by hearing, mm -hmm. okay. and hearing comes by the word of Yahweh. Okay. So if the, if, if the gospel isn't preached, they can't hear, and they can't have faith as is necessary. It's mm -hmm. the, the, the gospel being preached is actually Yahshua's blessing and invitation, and it is the power that he provides to save us. We can't save ourselves. He saves us. And I'll get mm -hmm. you one other scripture, if you would. Romans 1, verse 16. Okay, let's get Romans 1 and 16. 
For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Again, the gospel is the thing that delivers the power of Yahweh to save everyone that believes. Okay, and so again, that belief in Yahshua the Messiah is the essential fundamental thing to, for salvation. There's also a scripture in Acts which we could go to where uh, this, uh, actually it was a jailer that had asked uh, about what must I do to be saved? Oh, yeah, yes, and he scripture. said, believe in Yahshua and you shall be saved and your house. So there's so many scriptures that we can focus on where he talks about the necessity of belief to be saved. Right. Okay. Now, the baptism part of this is something I don't know if we have time to really go into all the details, but I will mention this. The baptism that is to go on in this age is the baptism with the Holy Spirit. Okay. It is not the baptism with water. The baptism with water went on under the Old Testament. Okay. And when Yahshua the Messiah himself was baptized, mm -hmm. he did it to fulfill baptism, okay. which meant to satisfy all the requirements involved. Okay. Now his works are the works of salvation. Okay. He did not do that to set an example for us to follow, regardless of what the custom and tradition. In fact, I guess I want to get this scripture, if you would, please. Go back to Matthew, the third chapter. And if you would read the 11th verse through about the 14th verse, this is an account of Yahshua coming to John the Baptist and then being baptized in their conversation. So if you wouldn't mind reading, starting at verse 11, which is John the Baptist statement. Okay. Matthew 3 and 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Okay, so notice right there, baptism can be done with more than water. Right. Mm -hmm. Water is not required for baptism. Mm -hmm. John said, and remember he is baptizing Old Testament Jews before the New Testament begins. Right. He says, I baptize you with water unto salvation. I did baptize you with water unto repentance. Unto repentance. Salvation. No. Right. Repentance. Salvation. Right. No. Right. Yeah. Repentance. Right. Exactly. I want, right. So the salvation will come after yeah, they it's repent. It's oh, okay. They're not going to be saved, at least from sin until after Yahshua the Messiah completes all of his work. Right. Okay. They're going to be baptized and they cannot be saved from their sin until afterwards. So my second question is, what was the, what was the mission of the Messiah? And if, might as well right continue with the same. Okay. okay. So Matthew 3 and 12, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his floor mm -hmm. and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And notice, by the way, the he that he's talking about is the one that's going to come after John. Right. That's the Messiah, Yahshua, that he's talking about. Okay. Remember he said, what did he say that Yahshua would baptize with? The Holy Spirit and with fire. Not with water. Right. John's baptizing with water, and he's very specific. Mm -hmm. Not Yahshua's not going to baptize with water. He's baptizing with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Right. And, and I want to get you another scripture when we're done here just to show you Yahshua never baptized anybody in water. Okay. okay? That's in John the fourth chapter. But we'll finish this out okay. here in Matthew 3. Okay, so Matthew 3, 13. Mm -hmm. Then cometh Yahshua unto Galilee, to Jordan, unto John, to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? Mm, why would he do that? Yeah. Why would he say, I have need to be baptized of you, why are you coming to me? Okay. Now, there's obviously part of the conversation here right. that isn't recorded okay. in that verse, okay? okay? Well, remember, John is baptizing people unto repentance from what? Sin. sin. From sin. Mm -hmm. Now, was Yahshua a sinner? 
No. No. So when, when, and there's another scripture where it shows that the people that came to John came confessing their sins. Mm -hmm. okay. Did Yahshua have sin to confess? No. 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 So if Yahshua has no sin, mm -hmm. and he's perfect and sinless, John knows he's a sinner. Right. So he says, well, if you're no sinless, sin. I'm that's the one me. that's a sinner, and I have need to be baptized of you. Why right. are you coming to me? Right. So clearly Yahshua did not come to be baptized for the same reason other people were coming to be baptized right. in water. Okay. okay? Right. He was not coming to repent from sin because he had no sin. Mm -hmm. Why was he being baptized? Now he answers that. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, 15th verse. And Yahshua answered, said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. That's the reason he was being baptized, was to fulfill all right. what? Righteousness. righteousness. Right. Now he's talking about righteousness that was specified under the Old Testament law mm -hmm. and Bible scriptures of the Old Testament. Okay. And without going into a lot more detail, there's many, many, many vo forms of baptisms and washings Okay. which is basically the same word as baptism. And they were ceremonial washings showing cleansings. Okay. Okay? And what Yahshua was doing was actually fulfilling all of those, meaning he was satisfying the requirements of those types of washings. And then he's going to wash or baptize with what? The Holy Spirit. And with fire. fire. Right. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I know that cuts it a little bit short because there's some other things about baptism. But So one key element that you bring across is that the Messiah's mission was to fulfill the things that were written in the Old Covenant of the Old Testament. And one of the definitions would also be to translate into reality. So oh, fulfill. Uh, to bring it to an end. That's correct. Or to translate mm -hmm. into reality. Right. There's that numerous places mission. where he says that he came to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And the word fulfill, like you're talking about, means to finish complete, bring to an mm -hmm. end, satisfy, mm -hmm. okay, bring into reality. Mm -hmm. So when he died on the cross and said it's finished, that means he was saying he fulfilled everything. Right. He was finishing his work. And his work was to fulfill the scriptures. Okay. Uh, there's other numerous places where he says that uh, he came to do the will of his heavenly father mm -hmm. and to finish his work. Mm -hmm. Numerous places where he uses, right. where in this translation, okay. it says that he was finishing the works that okay. the father gave him to do, which means to fulfill mm -hmm. all their requirements. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And he was doing that so that others wouldn't have to because others were incapable of doing it. Right. That was one of the things that had been going on for 1,500 years before Yahshua came in to fulfill. Mm -hmm. People were desperately trying to do the will of Yahweh to fulfill the requirements of Yahweh's law and every single individual failed. They were therefore all under sin, which is transgression of Yahweh's commandment okay. or law. And Yahshua was the only one that didn't do it, didn't transgress, I mean. Okay. Okay. So he was doing for others, others. what yeah. others could not do for themselves, so. thus saving them okay. from the condemnation that would come about from their transgressions because he was doing on their behalf what they couldn't do for themselves and it's accounted to them for righteousness as long as they put their trust in Yahshua. In other words, they're putting all their faith in him and then he is fulfilling or doing what's necessary for others. Okay, okay. So that kind of tie into my third question I had, that if you drink, smoke, or do adulterous things that's not quote unquote so good under the church world, that a person will not be saved. Because previously you just read the scripture that said, uh, you must be saved, what, if you believe? Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. By works you are, or by grace you are saved, saved through faith, saved. that not of yourself. Right. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. Is that the one you're yeah, that's referring, the one I was referring to? to? Okay. 
So right. these are just drinking, smoking, habits, and not so. things that I won't make me not be saved if I participate in such things. Yeah, let's clarify. Okay. There's a difference between sins and bad habits. Okay. Okay. Um, now there are, now what is a sin? Okay, I, I, because we need to know what that is. Okay. Part of the confusion here is where people classify bad habits as sins. Okay. And those are two different things. Okay. Okay. And then first of all, let me say this. The word sin means offense, to offend. Okay. okay? Now, you can offend a person without offending Yahweh. Okay. Okay. That, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes I offend myself, you know. Okay. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> but thankfully, in the end, as far as the final state of my soul, right. that is not based on whether I or somebody else mm -hmm. thinks I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. Okay? okay? That's not what's important. Okay. The only thing that's ultimately important is whether or not Yahshua approves of us. Okay. okay, whether he accepts us, okay. okay, whether we have offended him to the point to where we're disowned, okay? okay, if that's the case, we've got not only sin, but we have got the wrath of Yahweh to contend with, mm. okay, and this gets into another question because there's two distinct aspects of this, okay. sin and the wrath of Yahweh, okay. and the scriptures talk about being saved talking about from sin, mm -hmm. but also then needing to be saved from his wrath, okay, okay? which it, we'll put on the burner for later. Okay. All right, but let's find out what sin means even, okay, as far as the offense against Yahweh that's counted as sin, and I'm talking about during your and my time. Because remember, we are not under the Old Testament, mm -hmm. okay? Right. All right, so get First John, the third chapter, the fourth verse. Mm -hmm. that. First John. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. This entire third chapter is really important, but we're not going to take time to read all of it okay. now. I have First John 3 and 3. Mm -hmm. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. In other words, he's hoping in Yahshua the Messiah, or his faith is in Yahshua, and that's what's needed to be considered pure or without sin. Okay. Just as Yahshua is pure and without sin. Right? Okay. Please continue. For whosoever commits sin transgress also the law. Okay, now whoever commits sin transgresses the law. Okay, okay. please read. For sin is the transgression of the law. S that's what the sin is. It's transgression of the law, meaning the commandment. Okay. okay, now this gets into another issue about what commandment to whom and when. Okay, because obviously Yahweh gives orders to different people at different times. Mm -hmm. And if he orders somebody to do something or not to do something, mm -hmm. and they go against it, then that's, that's sin. sin. That's transgression of his commandment. Okay. So we've got to know who he's talking to, when, and so forth. Because right. sometimes people make a habit of picking up the Bible, they'll read anything in the Bible, they'll say, oh, this is the word of God, and then everything that's in there they apply to themselves. Okay not everything in there applies to you, right. at least directly. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. All right. So we've got to know what his commandment is to you and to me. Okay. And I don't know if we have time to get into that, but I, I'll finish a little more with this okay. chapter. Okay, John 3, 5 through 6. Mm -hmm. And ye know that he was manifest to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Now notice this. If he did his job, mm -hmm. our sins were taken away, according to John. John says he was manifested to take away our sins, okay. and he adds to that, he says, and in him is no sin. Right. Okay. okay? We, that's where it talks about people being washed from sins in the blood of Yahshua the Messiah. Okay. Okay? Whosoever, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Now, this is important. Mm -hmm. Whoever abides in him does not sin, mm -hmm. and whoever sins have not seen has him. not seen him, doesn't know him, right. okay? Mm -hmm. So people have a false idea that you get cleaned up from sin, then well, you go sin next week, mm -hmm. and then you have to have that sin taken away, mm -hmm. okay? That's wrong. Right. 
That's not the way it works. Okay. okay? Now, the, the part of the confusion is people say, but I know I had an impure thought. I know I smoked or had a drink mm -hmm. or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I'm a sinner. And what I'm saying is that there are some of those things that are not sins. Okay. They're not necessarily good things. Right, they're mm -hmm. not good necessarily for the physical body. Right. But they're not necessarily so they're not They're the not body. transgression of Yahshua's commandment. Right. Okay? okay. And, 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 and I, I, I want to be very clear. That does not mean that everything is okay right. unless you can find verbatim some language that says, okay, this is the commandment, et cetera, and you can't do, you know, anything mm -hmm. else. But what I'm saying is that we've got to know what his commandment is, transgressing that is sin, and actually it's in this chapter too, so we'll get down to that in a minute. Read a couple more verses, then go to the 21st verse. Okay, I'll read a few more, and then we've got about five minutes. Okay, so then we go to the 21st minutes. verse, and okay, I think that'll be good. So I'm at 1 John 3, 1 and 7, the next verse. Yep, please. Okay. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Correct. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. So there's a clear demarcation, no. okay? But you've got to know what makes the demarcation. Mm -hmm. right. All right. All right. For the sake of time, go to the 21st verse. Okay. <clears throat> 21. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments mm -hmm. and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. See that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of displeasing or offensive to him. Right. Next verse. 23. And this is his commandment. Now, remember, sin is transgression of his commandment. Right. Okay. This is his commandment. Mm -hmm. Please read. That we should believe on the name of his son, Yahshua mm -hmm. the Messiah, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now, did you notice that? Mm -hmm. Belief is right there. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. This is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahshua. Mm -hmm. Believe that Yahweh is salvation. That's what right. Yahshua's name means. Right. We need to believe that he truthfully is salvation for mm -hmm. our soul and love one another as he gave, Yahshua gave commandment. And he said that they should love one another as Yahshua loved them. Mm -hmm. He said there was no greater love than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Now, he laid down his life physically to pay for the sins of others so that all those that he counts as friends or members of his body mm -hmm. can be saved. We need to be able to and willing to lay down that life which he has given us mm -hmm. for their spiritual welfare. That okay. does not mean that I just jump out in front of a bus. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In other words, what we're trying to do is to Preach impart and to give that life-giving spirit knowledge that we have for others. Okay. Excellent. That's the gospel. Okay. That's the power of Yahweh to save. Okay. Thank you. Which then tunes me to uh, make this announcements. So, yeah. yes, would you yeah. please invite uh, our viewing audience to? Yeah. Our These event. lectures are free and open to the public. The topic is soul salvation, and we will be exploring the question what is the true explanation of the pattern and plan of salvation? These, these special lectures will be held at the Best Western Hotel located at 4400 Frontage Road in Hillside, Illinois. The dates will be April the 5th through the 8th, 2018. Please come out and study with us and learn more about a special lesson about the soul salvation. Yes, if you'd like to learn more about this and other elements of soul salvation, please join us at those special lectures in Chicago. Dr. Welsh, I'd like to thank you. Dr. Jackson, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, and us. thank you all for joining us on another segment of the True Gospel of the Kingdom TV show. We'd also like to uh, thank the viewing audience for tuning in to another episode of the True Gospel of the Kingdom TV show. We invite you to come study with us. Our Bible classes are free and open to the public. Um, we meet at the Best Western Hillside Hotel located at 4400 Frontage Road, Hillside, Illinois. Our classes are Mondays and Thursdays, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., and Sundays from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. on the second floor in the Wall Street Room. 
For more information, call 773-650-1341, extension 1. Visit us at our website at www.yashuatherock.org. Thank you.